Hi guys, welcome to my day off. I'm off to go get the old Bonds Cup. Probably do a little bit of shopping, you know, odds and sods, crap like that, but you don't really care about that. Now, um, you're new to the entire car industry, uh, driving industry. I don't know why I said car industry just then. <laughs> oh, my brain's going divvy today. Yeah, you're, you're new to the entire driving industry. Yeah, I need to take that down. There's something loose in there if anyone's curious. You're new to the entire driving industry and you want to find a job or you, you want to go the right way to get your license to get a job. Okay, fair enough. So what routes are open to you? Well, realistically, there's two. There is go and find a general haulier. Knightsvold, Fagan Wally, Turner's, Gregory's, whoever. Okay, it doesn't matter, whoever. And work in their warehouse. And then ask if they'd be willing to put you through your HGVs. Now, if you are under 21, because I believe the law has changed now, so you, I think it's 18 or something like that, to be a class one. If you are under 21, chances are they're going to say no because of insurance. And to be fair, if you're under 25, You'll probably be able to find work, but your insurance is going to—he's going to—it's going to cost them quite a large amount of money to insure you. Put it that way. And so certain companies may be put off by that. Ooh, hello. Right, country lane tractor. See a nice wide area for him to go into. Let him go into it. Lovely, lovely. I know the road was a large amount of room on this road, but. I used to be a farmer and I used to hate people, you know, giving it the beans towards me. So whenever I see tractors these days, I just, if there's enough room, I'll just let them come towards me and go around me. It's easier. But anyway, if you're under, like I said, if you're under 25, your insurance is going to cost them an arm and a leg. Even with government help, they've still got the entire, oh, well, he's quite young. You know, is he going to drive sensibly? All of that kind of stuff. I'm sure you can understand it. Um, but yeah, you go and work for one of these companies in the warehouse or something like that. And then ask if they'd put you through, you know, find a company that will put you through your HDVs. You will be tied to them for a couple of years. Just one of the things, unfortunately. Um, but you'll get your couple of years experience. Now, when you're tied to a company for a couple of years because they put you through your HDVs, one thing you must remember is chances are they're not gonna pay you as well as an experienced guy. And to be fair, you're not gonna be paid as well as an experienced guy in the beginning anyway. And they're gonna have some kind of control over you in that if you refuse to do something, well, then you're going to owe them two or three thousand pounds to cover the cost of your HGVs before they let you go. And again, you're going to be new, you're going to be wet behind the ears, and they're going to know that. <clears throat> and there is a strong possibility that they're going to play on that, that you don't have a clue about your rights as a driver, what they can and can't ask you to do, and what they can and can't threaten you with. So always bear that in mind. Um, the other option for you is the way I went but then again I was over 25 well I was 25 when I did it 25 hold on a minute 32 this year 25 or 7 yeah I was just about 25 24 25 <laughs> I'm forgetting my age now <laughs> um, and that was I funded my own HGVs and then joined an agency now, at the time, I was working in the company that shall not be named in one of their stores. And I was night crew. And of course, I got to chat to all the drivers because I worked on the back door. I worked on goods in, goods receiving. And so I found out which agencies went in there and which agencies did what in there because uh, the company that shall not be named has two sides to it. It has the store delivery side and then the the hub collection side and 
the hub collection side is far easier than the store delivery because obviously store deliveries you've got stores all over the place in central London and everywhere else and they can be quite tight and some of the stores are in buildings that were built in the 1700s or longer longer ago than that and consequently they were never even envisaged to be able to take the size of vehicles we have on our roads today and because of that they're very 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 tight to get into I mean you've seen my Sydney Street Reverse for example now as a new driver the Sydney Street Reverse is going to catch you out no ifs buts or maybes because you're going to be listening to the banksman saying full lock you're going to full lock forget to check the near side and hit the building it has been done many many times and if you watch the reverse you can actually see where part of the I don't know what you'd call it really but on the corner it's been worn away where people have just walloped it and you can see all the scratches and all the whist whistles and bells all the way down the side of the <laughs> concrete or you could go on the hub side now I knew because the hub side is a delivery side from suppliers it's industrial estate to industrial estate with the odd occasional tight place thrown in for a bit of fun so I knew which agency to go to so there is that if you work in a retail company Tesco's as the Sainsbury's Morrison's wherever if you work in the store transfer yourself to the back door to do good receiving talk to the drivers that go in there if you know you're within about an hour of a depot obviously it doesn't work if you're not within an hour of a depot so if you're in that lucky situation <clears throat> talk to the drivers find out which agencies go in there which agency supplies the majority of the drivers then if you self fund join that agency just before Christmas and if you join an agency just before Christmas and that agency happens to put drives into Tesco's as does Morrison Sainsbury's whoever Lidl wh wh whoever well it's just before Christmas I mean think about it <laughs> the volumes those guys have they need drivers they don't care whether you're experienced it's how I did it I, I wait until September October and that's basically how I managed to start off if you do do the do do <laughs> if you do the agency route then should you be a limited company now sorry for the forward facing footage my dashboard is exceptionally reflective and it's a proper design flaw as far as I'm concerned because it can make everything just vanish on you when you're driving along all of a sudden your, your windshield just goes dashboard it's like what the and as far as I'm concerned any car that has that issue it, it's a design flaw but anyway moving swiftly um, should you go limited company from day one yes and no um, you are more likely listen to that I need to change that hole don't I I really need to change that hole that's a little Tonka toy hole isn't it but if you're a limited company VAT registered and obviously you have to pay your own taxation and stuff like that the company the agencies you're going for will prefer you because it saves them a lot of in-house crap especially considering you've got the workplace pension now if you are a limited company you have to provide your own one if you are PAYE they have to provide you with one and agencies don't like providing people they employ, and I say that loosely, with any kind of benefits. Um, a large number of agency guys, when the European, the European legislation changed, and agencies had to provide, you know, holiday cover and certain amounts of cover, a lot of the agencies opted for the Swedish uh, delegation on that one, or derogation on that one, sorry, and you ended up signing contracts basically waiving your rights to everything other than 12 hours holiday pay or 12 hours sick pay a week which is nothing and they really don't like that and a lot of us were forced into becoming limited companies now I was already planning on doing that so I didn't care 
but at the time I wasn't, I was PAYE and there were options given, either become a limited company or you're not going to get much work, because if they only have to provide you with 12 hours, they're only going to bung you in for 12 hours because there you go, done. And if you want holiday, they really strong arm you against having holiday, they're like, oh no you can't, too many people have that week off and it doesn't matter what week you pick. You could pick the week directly after Christmas. Too many people have that week off. You could pick the week end of February. Too many people have that week off. You could pick the week directly after the end of the summer holidays. Too many people have that week off. It becomes a problem for you. So what you've got to understand is agencies are agencies. They're recruiters. They get you to a company. They don't want the headache of being your employer and all the things that go along with it, the work-based pension, holiday pay, sick pay, and the other bits and bobs. So if you go limited company, or even if you go sole trader under an umbrella company, which I know the rules have changed on that somewhat slightly, but it still exists. Okay, there, there, there are still ways around it, you can be a sole trader. If you do sole trader or a limited company, then you are more likely to get work. And if you are a limited company or sole trader, you usually get about a pound or pound fifty an hour more than PAYE. So you get the work and you get paid more. But when you're new, it swings and roundabouts because when you're new, you're a limited company, they therefore have to pay you more. It's their terms and conditions, but you're new. And they've got to tell their clients that you're new and their clients aren't going to want to pay you the excuse me the clients aren't going to want to pay you the higher salary because you're new they're going to want to you know test you for about 3 months and 6 months and see how you get on and then whatever so although it would probably be easier for you to find work through an agency it might be harder to get into the better companies via that agency as a limited company or sole trader. So it's a little swings and roundabouts. The other thing, if you're going to go down the agency route, well, if you're going to go down the agency route, you have to understand that for about the first year, 18 months, your work is going to be exceptionally fluctuating, okay? It, it, it's going to fluctuate like you can read about. Because you're going to literally be mopping up the dregs nobody else wants until the busy times. In the busy times, it'll be like full time out. Five days, six days, five days, six days, whatever you want. And you'll be able to call the shots to a degree on the hours you get, but in the quiet times, Whereas somebody like myself who's got the experience, you know, I'm asked for by name by the clients, I can virtually guarantee myself five days a week, almost every week throughout the entire year. There are some exceptions, obviously. It's agency, you've got to expect that. But you guys, you new guys, I mean, I've just been through February and March, and obviously April at the moment. <laughs> the thing is for a new guy at that time of year you're not going to get anything literally you get two days a week maybe maybe three so again the question is do you sign on to more than one agency of course you can should you well that questions loyalty and that's another big issue within agency work you see I'm a one agency person and I've been through all the crap. Now I was lucky, I didn't have, I don't have kids at the moment, wasn't married, didn't have a mortgage, any of that kind of stuff. And because of that, I was able to survive in house shares on my own, living with my other half of their pet and her parents. You know, my outgoings were quite low. So I could shelter the storm, I could weather the storm, sorry. Whereas some of you guys will be getting into this, maybe have a mortgage, maybe have kids, both, you can't, you can't weather that storm, and that's going to be a massive issue, so the safest thing for you to do is to see if you can find a company that's willing to train you.
um, and get in that way because at least you're guaranteed full time. It might be less money, but you can get your experience, all the whistles, bells, you can find a better paid job, do your has can, do your Moffit, do your whatever. And at least you've got a full-time job, you're guaranteed hours. So if you are a parent, if you are have a mortgage, things like that, and you want to become a truck driver, find a company that will sponsor you. Even if you have to go to the dark side and go through the Eddie Stobart crap, you know, the Eddie Stobart Academy. <laughs> Even if you have to go through that, do it. Because after you've done the first couple of years, you've got your experience. Okay, you'll have been treated like crap, you'll have been paid badly, but you can go wherever the hell you want now. You've done your two, three years, whatever you're contractually obliged to do. You've kept full-time income. It should be more than shelf stacking. There are some areas of the country where it's not gonna be more than shelf stacking. It is gonna be basic minimum or what is now the living wage. But you should be able to, to do it, quite simply. But there you go, that's basically the ins and outs of if you're starting out in this industry. Now, if you are under 21, get your seven and a half ton, your class two. I know class two isn't technically seven and a half ton, but get your class two. Find some kind of seven and a half ton job, maybe class two job if they'll take you. Do a couple of years doing that, then get your class one. If you spend the money and get your class one as a teenager, you will not get a class one job. There is virtually zero chance you will get a class one job. The insurance will be tens of thousands of pounds for you, and that company is not going to spend that. They're just not. They'll put you in a class two, maybe. Guaranteed to put you in a seven and a half ton. Now it's not gonna be the best paid job, it's not gonna be great, but it's gonna give you road experience, road knowledge, location knowledge, finding places, that's again, knowledge. <laughs> um, the part of your brain that deals with, you know, motion, with driving, with, you know, Geography, you know, finding where you're going, that part of your brain will overdevelop. It's the same with all drivers, professional drivers. And that experience will help. You know, you've been working for the company seven and a half ton for a few years, then they put you into class two because you've already got your class two license. Maybe you've flitted, you know, flitted and flirted with class two a few times. And then you've done a couple of years on that, now you're approaching 24, 25, they put you in your class one, fish bash bosh, your insurance has always been kept manageable. If you can get a class one job as a teenager, then obviously go for it, but make sure you can get that job. And make sure it is not for a company that runs bent more bent than a two bob bit. Otherwise, you're going to be in proper trouble very quickly. You won't know which way is up. You won't know that that is actually breaking the law, potentially. What is he doing? Oh, I do love people like that. 40 mile an hour road, and we're doing 30. Oh, he's looking for somewhere. Fair enough. I redact my statement. He's looking to pick somebody up. There we go. Um, but do be aware if you are under, I'd say about 23, really. I, I know the government are giving various help to companies that put the younger guys in as drivers and things like that, but again, the company, okay, gets a bit of government help towards insurance costs and things like that, extra write-offs. But then it's their vehicles. Now somewhere like Knights of Old that pride themselves on having a very good fleet of trucks. You know, pretty good condition. I mean, don't see many scratches on them. They're less likely to give you a job than say, 
Mr. Smith, bent as you can be, you know, let's run. It's the NHS workers going out, protesting about wages. They need to be paid more as far as I'm concerned. Um, bent as anything, chances are he's going to capitalise on that subsidy and all that government money and he's going to give you a job, but you're going to be running hooky as hell. So, if you are getting into driving professionally, do seven and a half time for a couple of years, class two for a couple of years, then class one, because that way your insurance is always low enough to, to get you into the better companies. I know you're not going to be paid as much, I know it's going to be a long drawn out process, but then again, so is getting a degree, so, you know, further education. I mean, you want to become a doctor, you're talking, what, at least six years, then there's a couple of years before you signed off. So you're talking nearly 10 years. I mean, what I'm talking about is two, four, six, six years. An average degree is what, an average proper master's degree is what, six years? You want to become a class one driver, that's basically a doctorate of driving. <laughs> because of the size of vehicle, weight of vehicle, and what you've got to do with that vehicle. So, take your time, do it properly, get into driving that way, and you will keep your, you will keep the costs of the company you want to work for down. There you go. But anyway, that's that. I am fast approaching the turning to go down to my barbers. I shall get me hair shaved. <laughs> well, shortened at least. Um, then it's do a little bit of shopping and see me mates at Central Tyres. Go see what they're up to today. As you can see, Central Tyres coming up on the left. If you are in the Chelmsford area, please go to them to get some tyres. Keep them busy. They're lazy bastards at the best of times. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be stopping in there on the way back. Anyway, cheers for watching. Hope that helped to answer some questions. Again, if you do have any questions based on that, early whoop then just leave them in the comment section below. I mean, if you're leaving comments on older videos, I'm not getting the AOL emails. I'm not getting the emails on them, so I'm, I'm not knowing. I'm seeing some of them, but I'm not seeing all of them, and it's really annoying me, because I might start a conversation with one of you, and then I might not get your reply. I won't think you've replied, you have replied, and then somebody else reply, uh, posts a message on there, and I notice that it's been six days or something and it's like oh but uh, no if you've got any questions do leave them down below i shall hopefully get the get the email and respond but anyway cheers for watching guys like subscribe share about do whatever it is you usually do it does seem to be working and i'll see you in the next one